Thank you for joining me on the journey. This is Completed Christianity. Back again for next episode of Being Complete, continuing on with the exposing of the Hebrew Roots Exposed documentary. Let's go ahead and refer back to our schedule after we do these Hebrew Roots exposing videos. Exposing of exposing. So, after we do these, then we'll settle into a schedule that appears to be much like this. So, let's get right into it and look at some more of this video. At the end of that dark path, and the destination is Judaism. Okay. Like we said in the previous video, there's some ministries, fake Hebrew roots ministries, infiltrators that come in and they desire to lead people to Judaism by making them Hebrew roots and then Messianic Judaism. And just like Pastor Anderson says here, but this is not the Hebrew roots movement as a whole. I think that maybe some of these organizations like this, they have some kind of backing, some kind of funding, and they're able to somehow come in, grab a lot of people, and then it goes on a, a dark path, as he says, of these ministries. It's just like in Christianity, you have these ministries, like I mentioned in the first intro video to this. It's like you have parts of Christianity that they go down dark paths, just like Pastor Anderson and his group have gone down dark paths and there's several dark paths that they have gone down it's just like i said in the first video it's like doing an expose on christianity and then profiling mormons or profiling jehovah's witness most christians are gonna be like hey whoa and they're gonna cry foul that's not fair or say like doing an expose on christianity and profiling the prosperity movement and then other people on the other side, you know, Baptists and more conservative denominations, they'll be like, whoa, that's not fair. That's that's not Christianity. That's just them over there. That's their thing. That's not the whole thing. That's not the right thing or whatever but that they might say. It's the same thing going on here in this video. As I said in the first video, it's not a fair assessment of the movement. It's like taking the fringe and painting a broad brush over the whole thing with it. That's what's going on here. I know a guy who's going to school to be an Orthodox rabbi right now. I don't see how he couldn't have been at salvation when he talked about his childhood and getting into it. I don't think there was any doubt in his mind at one time. So he somehow forsook the Messiah. He walked away, whether his faith... I mean, you can argue maybe his faith was weak. So they bring this guy on to say, see, this guy denied the Messiah. He walked away, and they're trying to say because guy got in this Hebrew root stuff that the destination was for the guy was Judaism and that's the dark path that you're on oh well, no if you're in one of these fringe or fake Hebrew roots groups then yeah that's the path you're on because you're in the wrong group just as one of the other fellows in this was and like I said before I find it striking that this is a small denomination a small group, a small core of pastors, but yet they got like two guys that are ex-Hebrew roots. So people would say it's really fishy, but I guess that's the way it worked out in this case. Typically the first thing that they come at you with is the Sabbath day. And the reason that they hit you with that first is because of the fact that they have a strong argument for it by saying, well, it's in the Ten Commandments. Oh yeah, so they hit you with Sabbath day first because Sabbath is gateway drug to the whole thing and it starts you down this this dark path that's what that's what he's trying to trying to say here and they hit you with that first because they got a strong argument because it's in the Ten Commandments well yeah because as this guy's gonna say Christians they'll protest at courthouses because they taken down the Ten Commandments but yet Christians only want to keep nine and you might say, oh, no, I go to church on Sunday, so I'm I'm good for that one. Well, it's the seventh day. Sunday's not the seventh day, even though in some countries they make it the seventh day. It, it's not, and it never was. 
and you can look at historical records and prove that. And so it's just this big, long thing that just doesn't make any sense to try and get away from the Father's commands. I mean, we're supposed to be reckoning ourselves to be dead. And so what complaint does a dead person have? None. That's why the clinical definition of death is the absence of all irritation. And so if you're dead, what does it matter if you got to keep a Sabbath? What does it matter if you got to do this or you got to do that? What does it matter if you're dead? If you're dead, you're not complaining. So if you're complaining, then you got an issue. They have a strong argument for it by saying, well, it's in the Ten Commandments. Oh, yeah, and with this, they're leading into what they're doing is they're going to deny the Ten Commandments. They're going to deny the word of the Father. That's what's going to go on coming up here. They will protest at courtrooms about uh, taking the Ten Commandments, but they only believe in keeping nine. I'm going to keep all nine, but that one, don't want to. The number one reason that the Hebrew Roots Movement believes that the Sabbath is for today is because it's part of the Ten Commandments. So it's part of the Ten Commandments. So that right there is just another niche right there that they're trying to chip away to where they're fixing to deny the Ten Commandments. It, and it's also, it's one of the Ten Commandments. That's a big deal because the Ten Commandments was put in the Ark. It's a commandment. That's the fourth commandment. Most people would agree that the Old Testament is done away, but what people fail to understand oftentimes is that the Ten Commandments actually were the Old Testament. And this guy here, his name's Matt Powell. He's one of the guys that he's ex-Hebrew roots, and apparently he was in some fringe group that basically denied the Messiah, and that's how he got out, and that's how he got into this mess. So he, he basically got out of the frying pan and into the fire. Old Testament. Now, I'll explain that a little bit further in a moment, but if you would go to Deuteronomy chapter 4, Deuteronomy chapter 4, we're going to look up all three mentions of this term, the Ten Commandments. It's mentioned three times in the Old Testament. The first was in Exodus 34. The next one's in Deuteronomy 4.13. The Bible reads, And he declared unto you his covenant, which he commanded you to perform, even Ten Commandments. So he said, even there is a restatement. He declared the covenant, even Ten Commandments. And so it's clear that the Bible is saying here that the words of the covenant were the Ten Commandments. The words of the covenant were the Ten Commandments. Because the words of the covenant are Ten Commandments. The Ten Commandments are the words of the covenant. The, then the covenant's done away with. The, the covenant's the old covenant. So that, that means that the Ten Commandments are, are done away with. You know, this, this is not mainstream Christian doctrine in and of itself. This is even more fringe than, than the mainstream Hebrew roots. So, so they're just way out on a limb here, and they're in dangerous territory because Deuteronomy 4.2 says not to add to or take away from what he's commanded. So when you add to and take away from what he's commanded, then you're adding to the word and you're taking away from the word. And who is the word? Messiah. The Messiah is the word made flesh. What word was John talking about? The only word they had was the Torah at the time. When John wrote that, the only word they had was the Torah. He was the Torah made flesh. So when you add to it or you take away from it, you change who the Messiah is. When you take the Sabbath away, then you change what he's done for us. You, you change the magnitude of the price that he paid the sin that he delivered you from you change the magnitude of that when you change the word second corinthians chapter 3 verse 6 watch this who also hath made us able ministers of a new testament not of the letter but of the spirit for the letter killeth but the spirit okay so the letter kills but the spirit gives life so oh, see you know, we're ministers of the New Testament, not a letter. So, oh, there we go. But that's because we're beginning from a faulty foundation, beginning from a preconceived idea. And see, the letter kills. We think that's a bad thing, but that's not a bad thing. It's a good thing that the letter kills because that was 
as it says in Galatians, that I was our tutor to lead us to Messiah because by the letter we deserve death. So because we deserve death, we need a savior. The letter says if you profane the Shabbat, that, that you'll die. And so we need a savior. That savior came and died. So if we are in him, and then you got to define what it is to be in him, which is to do the things he did, to live the way he lived after having his blood applied to your life by faith and your past sin wiped away. You're to walk in his ways and what he did. And that's what Paul says, that you imitate me as I imitate Messiah. That's what he says. John says that you ought to walk as Messiah walked. All these things, it's so blatant, but we've been spoon-fed this doctrine of lies that you can't see through the lies. The letter kills, that's a good thing. But the Spirit gives life. In the Old Covenant, the letter, it kills. It requires your death. But the Spirit gives life through the blood of Messiah. So that death is done away. The administration of death, which is what they're going to talk about next, is done away. And now you can walk in newness of life in Messiah. But if the ministration of death, watch this, written and engraven in stones was glorious. Let me ask you something. What was it that was written and engraven in stones? The whole book of Genesis? The whole book of Exodus? Nope. Was the whole book of Leviticus engraven in stone? What was engraven in that stone? The Ten Commandments. And he says... Okay, so this sounds like a real good argument, but it only sounds that way if you're coming from the faulty foundation, from a preconceived idea, and you don't understand the Scripture, and you don't understand the New Testament as a whole. The ministration of death, written and engraven in stones, well, that is the law as administered by the Old Covenant. It requires our death because there's a punishment. That's what makes it a law. It's Torah. It's actually instructions. In the Old Covenant is this administration of death. And this administration of death keeps us bound up with the law requiring our death. And so it was external. Written and engraven in stones is external. But that external part, that administration of death that requires our law, that's what was to be done away with. It was to be done away with that it was engraven on stones. And then it was to be the same laws to be engraven on our heart which is what it comes to say in the new covenant in in jeremiah 31 31 that's what it it comes to say i put my torah in their inward parts and write it on their hearts so this is the difference it's external to internal and with that we'll pick it up again next time Psalm 89, 34, my covenant, I will not break nor alter the word that has gone out of my lips. If you like the video, give us a thumbs up. Comment down below. Comments of opposition are welcome. Just don't say anything dumb like we're not under the law. We're under grace because you've been taught to use that verse outside of the bounds of its intended context. Subscribe now. Hit the subscribe button down below smash that subscribe button and then ring that bell so that you get notifications of all new videos